Hello, everybody. Welcome to M3. Uh, my name is Mark, and I'm the author of the Spark Starter channel. Uh, we're going to be doing some science experiments today. And uh, if you want to see some of my other um, science and engineering projects, you can uh, click my um, YouTube link in the corner here. So science experiments, um, if we look at the root words, uh, science actually comes from the Greek, it means to know. And our word experiment uh, comes from, from experience. So to know from experience, that is what a science experiment is. So we're going to be doing a lot of experience today. I'm going to be showing you some experiments. And I'm not going to go in depth with the explanations. I'm just going to give you a little bit to get interested. And you can do the knowledge to know. So with that said, let's get started with our experiments. In this video together, we're going to be discussing the state of matter called solids. So solid matter, and we're going to be touching on gravitational energy, kinetic energy, and atomic energy. The first thing I'd like to share are some different types of metals. Now you'll see they're of different size. This one is aluminum. I believe this one may be uh, steel. This one may be stainless steel. Uh, brass. Copper. And lead. I'm not sure about these two. If, if anybody uh, knows what these are, bonus points if you can uh, leave a comment. So all of these are of different size. But what is surprising about all these different metals here is I have a scale and we're going to weigh each one on the scale. I'm going to set it to zero. And we'll go with our largest aluminum rod. And you'll see it weighs about 100 grams. Our next metal sample also weighs 100 grams. Note the difference in size. Our next sample weighs 100 grams. Our brass sample weighs 100 grams. Our copper sample weighs 100 grams. And our lead sample weighs 100 grams. So, even though the aluminum rod is much larger than the copper rod, they are equivalent in weight. So they are pulled on with equal force by gravity, but they have different sizes. You'll also note that they have different colors as well. What you're seeing is the difference 
and the way the metal molecules are structured, both in the way they reflect light and in their arrangement that allows the aluminum to be far less dense than the copper. So all the, although these items are of different size, they have different densities, but they are acted on by the force of gravity equally. The next item I'd like to share with you is called Euler's Disc. In the previous demonstration, we showed how different metals of different densities were affected equally by gravity. Euler's disk demonstrates two forms of energy working against each other. The force of gravity is pulling the metal towards the earth and the rotational kinetic energy that will impart to the disk. Now, if we were just let the disc fall over, fall flat, it stops. Or we can let it spin. But we are going to simultaneously spin the Euler disc and allow it to fall. And you will see the kinetic energy of the rotation, rotating disc acting against the gravitational energy uh, attracting it to the Earth. So let's watch Euler's disc in action. Wow, it just keeps going. Just watch it. That is Euler's disc. The next interesting item I'd like to share with you is a gyroscope. Now, a gyroscope won't stand on its own. You can see it's unstable. It's hard to get to balance. But you'll notice what's interesting about the gyroscope is that it has this wheel. It's a, it's a heavy wheel in its center, and it can spin. So what we're going to do is we're going to input a lot of energy into this wheel, and it'll be rotating in this plane. Now, 
a plane perpendicular to the force of gravity. So I have in here a battery, and there's a little motor that spins. I'm not sure if you can see that spinning. And there is a little place for me to attach the motor. So you can see, I'm charging up that rotor with the battery energy. No, the magic of the gyro. What was before unstable is now perfectly stable, even if you try to push it. For another trick, I have here just a simple piece of wire. I'm going to hook our gyro. And it stays in the same orientation. I'll even move it there. And it almost appears to defy gravity. And that is the magic of the gyroscope. All right, the last piece of solid matter I'd like to share with you is this ordinary, what may appear to be an ordinary rock. But this rock actually contains uranium ore. Now, the reason I'm holding gloves is you don't want to get any type of uranium ore dust on your hands and then eat it. Because what's special about uranium is that it is spontaneously fissioning into other elements. And it's giving off energy known as radiation. What I have here is a... Geiger counter. Let's we'll scoot our uranium over here for a moment while we talk about the Geiger counter. The Geiger counter operates by having a, a Geiger tube here, which is just a tube uh, that's been evacuated and filled with some inert gas. And when 
An atom in the uranium ore splits and it shoots out a particle of energy called an ion, and we'll talk a little bit more about ions later when we get to plasmas. It goes into the tube, ionizes or charges the gas inside the tube. That makes it conduct electricity. When the, when the gases inside the tube become conductive, electricity flows through the tube and it allows for our detector to flash and our electronics to detect that an ion has passed through. So right now, with the uranium ore being all the way over here, we're counting about 45 ions per minute fly out from the uranium ore or, or just shooting around um, in the background. So when I bring this uranium ore closer to our Geiger counter, let's see what happens. You'll notice there are more and more ions hitting the Geiger tube, creating more and more clicks for us to detect. You'll notice a spike in the amount of radiation we detect coming from our rock with uranium ore. I'll move it away. And our radiation level begins to fall. And I'll move it even further away still. So you'll know that the radiation levels are much lower with uranium farther away. I'd like to share one other radioactive rock with you. This radioactive rock is actually a piece of glass. Now prior to 1940, this was just common desert glass, but it was in the desert in New Mexico, where the first atomic bomb was tested. Since then, this little sample of uh, desert sand that has since been turned into a green glass called Trinitite was created during the first atomic bomb tests in 1945. And it is still giving off energy. So I'm going to bring our Trinitite, our sample of desert glass that has been uh, desert sand that's turned been turned into glass from atomic blast energy, and I'm going to bring it close to our Geiger tube. Let's see what happens. So you'll note it's not as radioactive as this rock of uranium ore, but you do notice a spike when we put the trinitite close to our Geiger tube. So that concludes our session on solids and the three different types of energy associated with solids. Uh, gravitational energy, kinetic energy, and atomic energy. 
And again, these were just experiments that will expose you to these uh, interesting topics and the science of learning more about why these things happen, I leave to you. Thank you.